My reaction when my ex-wife told me she was leaving me. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic! Go, go, go! Me when a fragrance YouTuber tells us a fragrance gets them non-stop compliments. This is unbelievable! Everyone when Jeremy Fragrance is finally institutionalised. This is what we were fearing might happen! Me when my wife interrupts me playing Gran Turismo on the PlayStation. You have destroyed my opportunity of winning the 10th Grand Prix of the year! What I said when I found out my mother and father-in-law couldn't come to stay with us for Christmas because they'd contracted Legionnaire's disease on a cruise ship. Brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! The average duration of my lovemaking sessions. 3.36 seconds! My first drink of the day when it enters my bloodstream. There we are, folks. I'm back. Hello guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to look at two amazing nuclear powerhouse 80s fragrances, Foreo by Bogart and Lapidus Poron. Before we get into that, don't forget I've got a code for you. Mr. 15 gets you 15% off at myfragrancesamples.com. That's my recommended place to get fragrance samples in the USA and Canada and Puerto Rico. Link in the description, Mr. 15, myfragrancesamples.com. Amazing range of designer and niche scents. Great service they offer. Also guys, Bon Viveur. You can get an amazing discount of 30% off as I shoot this in spring of 2022. Follow the link in the description to go to NortonandWilson.com. It's exclusively there, this, this discount. 30% off code BON30. It is the perfect spring fragrance. Incredibly gentlemanly, refined, beautiful citruses, spices and woods. It is exquisite. Don't miss out. BON30. 30% off. Okay, guys, so let's get into the video. Forio versus Lapidus Porom, nuclear projection and longevity. Here are my thoughts. Here we go with these two late 80s outstanding powerhouse fragrances. We're going to try and describe each one in the video. And just, I'm going to tell you my opinion on which one is the best of the two. So we've got Forio by the house of Jacques Bogart and we have Lapidus Porom by the house of Ted Lapidus. Now, interestingly, Bogart appears to be a late 70s brand or mid 70s brand. They emerged around about then. It's just really uh, a brand about fragrances and uh, co cosmetic type products. They are actually now the owners of the Lapidus line of fragrances. So they own and I guess produce in their own way either of uh, both of these two fragrances. So essentially they are coming from in, in a way the same house although the branding is different. So Ted Lapidus was a famous fra uh, fashion designer back in the uh, 60s and 70s. South African designer famous apart from many other things for uh, apparently introducing the idea of safari themed clothing. Uh, as far as I can tell, and I may be wrong here, Jacques Bogart, I, I can't find any history of this being a, a uh, fashion brand. It seems to be merely a fragrance and cosmetics brand. So we're going to compare the two powerhouse fragrances in question here Fio Forio and Lapidus Porom. Now let's talk about the price first. Okay, so why are we comparing them? These are two 80s, late 80s masculine powerhouse fragrances. I think it's fair to say originally at least released as cheapies relatively inexpensive fragrances compared to your Chanel's and your Dior's et al. Uh, but now only the Lapidus Porom can be regarded as a cheapie, but it does seem, Forio you see was discontinued, but it seems to be back in production or easily available again. And the box that I've got here for Forio does have a long note listing, which only came in not so many years ago, suggesting that it may be back in production now. I'm not quite sure. If anyone knows the details, let me know. Let's talk about prices and availability. So first of all, Forio by Bogart can be found at the moment in the UK, at least, on eBay uh, for around £79. So no longer an affordable gem. That's rather expensive. That's where I bought mine. As I say, it would appear to be very much a new bottle. This is not a used bottle. This is not a vintage fragrance as far as I can tell, but it does have a very old school feel. If anyone knows more about that, if you're in the States, you know the availability there. Al Manzano, my friend, did tell me you could also get it in the States, buying it, I think, from Canada recently. Let me know about all that. Lapidus Prom, much simpler thing. This one you can get, I, I saw it on Notino in the UK for only the minimal price 
of uh, 16 pounds something so very very affordable fragrance still so there in terms of the price and value for money big head start for the lapidus but we're going to talk about both fragrances today let's kick off with ted lapidus pour on them uh, so this fragrance was released in the year 1987 uh, if you go to fragrantica they're calling it an amber fragrance i don't think these designations on fragrantica are very often correct so they're well let's say they're very often not correct i would probably call it a fougere fragrance although it's it's sort of an everything but the kitchen sink note listing so let's talk about that the perfumer then for this one uh, is or was martin grass grass g-r-a-s martin grass i'll call him let's give you the note listing your top notes for the lapidus are pineapple lavender artemisia juniper berries lemon basil and bergamot the middle notes are honey incense pine tree rose brazilian rosewood that's my favorite kind of rosewood jasmine caraway orris root lily of the valley and petty grain and your base notes on this one are bad tobacco patchouli oak moss amber musk sandalwood tonka bean and cedar so for your money, you're getting an incredibly powerful fragrance. The whole point here is to talk about the nuclear element of these fragrances. They are both extremely potent, strong fragrances. This is long lasting. The projection is obnoxious, I find, and it really, really lasts well. So this is one of the few where I really would say be careful with your number of sprays and that kind of thing. So Lapidus Prom, outstanding performance. Let's talk about the quality of the actual scent. Uh, I've got a little bit that I'm smelling on a card here. So this fragrance, it really isn't for the faint-hearted. It is a very potent fragrance. It is indeed a fresh fragrance with a bit of a barbershop theme. Uh, many people talk about the animalic undertones of this one. I don't actually pick up on that much animalic stuff in the base. I don't pick up on tons of um, civet or castorium type of accords. There is musk listed in the base there. But what I get really is this very potent, green, dry, fresh sort of dry and yet with a well let's say bitter but with a hint of sweetness overall thing it is very very well composed i think in terms of masking individual notes it, it, but it is a little bit brutish it is very strong it has strong kind of patchouli oak moss sandalwood undertones in the base mixed in with dry woody accords in the mid there are floral tones in there but you don't get a ton of them so if you're looking for something very masculine yes the aura is not that dissimilar to things like in a more illustrious realm chorus by the house of yves saint laurent uh, but it's got this it's even more brutish than that in, in my opinion it is a little crude it is a little, little rugged but it's rather interesting so if you are looking for a really affordable powerhouse 80s style fragrance that lasts incredibly well this is a great place let's compare it now to furio by the house of jacques bogart so this one it, as i say seems to be back available for us all to get hold of i don't, don't exactly quote me on that though if you're in the states but i can certainly find it in the uk and it, it's certainly not been used i don't know when they was they were produced some people are saying no it is it is discontinued but i don't think so i think it's undiscontinued i think it was and it isn't i don't know let me know i'm confused let me talk about the fragrance it came out in 1988 Again, uh, good old Fragrantica are telling it's a woody, an amber woody fragrance for men. Again, I, who knows how they come up with these ideas. Again, maybe more of a fougere, I'm not sure. Your perfumer for this one was Ron Vinegrad or Ron Winograd. And the note listing for this bad boy, you've got a, t a top of a musk, castorium, amber. I'll just adjust the focus there for a second. Uh, let's start, start that again. Musk, castorium, amber, tobacco, lavender, fig leaf, vetiver, coriander, laurels, juniper berries, and bergamot. Your mid notes on this one are civet, castorium, patchouli, tobacco, and vetiver. And the base notes are musk and amber. I would say this one indeed is much more animalic in its aura. It is a very, very potent fragrance. Again, there are some similarities. Okay, so these both do have an element of that fresh, masculine type classic fragrance aura. They both have that 80s powerhouse vibe. They both are a little bit in your face, more so, even I would say perhaps, than things like Koros, which has a little bit of the uh, more refined Yves Saint Laurent DNA in it. This one, this one, it's 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 magnificent, but it's uh, again, it's uh, it's not shy. It's it, it's really in your face. Okay, so I'm smelling it now. So what you get with this one, it is a very similar smell, but this one has a little bit more sweetness and a little bit more mystery about it. Uh, actually, I'm looking for the note of incense, which was listed in Lapidus, but I don't actually see it in this fragrance, but I get a, a wispy kind of incense exotic hint in this thing. Now you notice there's castorium as a top note, middle note of civet and in the base musk. So running through this, there definitely is this gnarly 
animalic undertone, this really kind of challenging accord. So if you like animalic type fragrances, if you like the undertones of Chorus, the thing about Chorus that might put people off, I would say Forio actually has more of that going on in it than the Lapidus, which uh, might frighten some people who've smelled Lapidus and found it very strong. This one is a little bit sweeter. Um, both fragrances, I think, no, the other one has honey in it. Honey's listed in Lapidus, but weirdly not in Forio, although I find Forio to be sweeter. I don't see uh, vanilla listed. Maybe there's some vanilla in here, though. It is a sweeter, more complex to my nose well yeah i think more complex to my nose it has more of an animalic undertone and it definitely really smells like an 80s powerhouse fragrance to me the lapidus i've never smelled a vintage again you could and this is a modern version you buy now i feel like the uh, forio smells more like it is a vintage fragrance so if i'd bought a bottle that was made in 1989 or 1990 online this has some of those smells that i feel like you can't put in a fragrance anymore and i feel a little bit like the lapidus still smells great and very interesting but maybe they've had to restrict some of the notes maybe the oak moss or whatever and it's changed the fragrance perhaps a little bit from how it smelled but somehow assuming this is made in the modern era right now forio they've, they've managed to smell make this thing smell more like an old vintage fragrance so i've got to tell you this one would be a better option if you really really are passionate about smelling like you come from the 1980s quite literally now the price is the off-putting thing the price for bogart forio much higher 79 pounds is it worth it are you going to get a lot of compliments with either of these probably not unless you meet someone who really happens to love old school stinky type of fragrances this one for your 100 mil uh, that 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 price is fair if you are a true vintage aficionado you may not find this something you want to wear to work or on a date so you've got to be a bit of a fragrance fan a collector or someone who just doesn't give a darn what other people think but i would say overall of the two my definite favorite by a reasonably comfortable margin would have to be forio by boga i would give this a nine out of ten not that i really should be marking fragrances lapidus is interesting but it doesn't quite blow my mind so i might only rate it uh, i'd call it a 7.5 but let's bump it up to an 8 just for the spectacular manliness of the bottle so i would edge it for the forio fragrance absolutely outstanding nuclear yes but oh, by, by the way yes both very very powerful equally long lasting and strong forio go for it if you've got the bucks if you want a good taste of a real powerhouse fragrance and you don't want to spell, spend b big bucks and you may you may you may be someone who would prefer lapidus go for the lapidus great cheapy lapidus if you feel really brave and you've got a few more spare pounds in your pocket burning a hole it's the forio by bogart for me uh by the way bogart i think a, officially a french house nowadays for what it's worth guys i'll leave it there thank you so much for watching remember whatever you're doing in life let's project and sometimes life may stink but we can always smell good or perhaps many may think we stink if we wear these we'll see you in the next one bye bye if you'd like to see an extra video from me every week sign up to my patreon group it's only two dollars a month there's a link in the description and we have loads of interesting stuff going on in there i do a lot of fragrance stuff of course but i also talk about some other things to do with my life it's really fun and i hope to see you in there as i say you can follow the link in the description or just go to patreon and type in mr smelly 1977